So for um, number six, we want to prove all these statements by contradiction. So a proof by contradiction um, basically means assume that what you want to prove is false, um, show that it leads to a contradiction, therefore your assumption must have been wrong, and so it must be true. So um, we're going to let a b belong to the set of positive integers. Okay. And for A, we're going to begin assuming that what we want to prove is false. Now, most of these are conditional statements of the form if P implies Q. Now, the only way for a conditional statement to be false is if the um, antecedent is true. So if we have P and the consequent is false and not Q. So that's what we have to do. Well, if we're doing by contradiction, we have to assume P and not Q. So we're going to say assume assume p, assume a divides b, and assume not q. So the opposite of a less than or equal to b, and a is greater than b. So if a divides b, then there exists a c belonging to the set of integers such that um, b is equal to a c, right? And what we have here, uh, b is positive, so B is positive, C is, sorry, B is positive, A is positive, so C must be positive, okay. And now why do we care uh, about showing that C is positive? Um, the reason that we care is if A is greater than B, right, and B is equal to AC, it must be that a is uh, a is bigger to a c, and if we divide both sides by a, it means that one um, that one is bigger than c. But c is a positive integer, so c is either equal to or greater than one which is a contradiction, a contradiction. So we've shown that a contradiction has happened and we say therefore, for if A divides B, then A is less than or equal to B. So that is it for item A by contradiction. Um, now let's go to item B. So once more, we have a conditional, and to assume that the the thing that the conditional is false, we have to assume that the antecedent is true. So we're going to say here, um, B assume the antecedent is true. So assume A B is odd, and assume the consequent is false, and let the opposite of both a and b are odd. Let a or b, um, let a or b be even, right? Um, and so I'm just going to choose one of them. So suppose a is even without loss of generality. Now, this without loss of generality means that because we haven't assumed anything about A or B, it means that we can use them interchangeably um, without changing the logic of our proof. Because um, the same, if I say that A is even, the same logic works for B being even. So I can just use without loss of generality and kind of use them interchangeably. So I have, suppose A is even then there exists a C belonging to the set of integers such that A is equal to 2C. So AB is going to be equal to 2C times B, which is equal to 2 times CB. And CB is an integer. So, um, so AB is even. So now we have a b is odd and a b is even which 
is a contradiction. Which is a contradiction, right? And so our conclusion, therefore, therefore, if a, b is odd, then a and b are both odd. And that is it for item B. Okay, let's do item C. And once more, we assume that the uh, antecedent is true and the consequent is false. So for this one, C, assume the antecedent is true, assume A is odd and the consequent is false. So and A plus one is odd. Then there exists integer CD, so CD belonging to the set of integers, such that A is equal to um, A is equal to 2C plus 1 and and A plus 1 is going to be equal to 2D plus 1. Okay, so then I have that A plus 1 is going to be equal to 2c plus 1 plus 1, which is equal to 2c plus 2. So we have here that a plus 1 is equal to um, 2c plus, actually, and let me factor this. So a plus 1 is going to be equal to, we're just going to factor out that 2, 2 times c plus 1. And so we have here that c plus 1 belongs to the set of integers. So, belongs to the set of integers. So, um, a plus 1 must be even. And we have here that a plus 1 is odd, and a plus 1 is even, which is... Contradiction. Um, and actually, I didn't even need the second part here, right? So maybe I'm just going to remove this. Uh, a plus 1 is odd and a plus 1 is even, which is a contradiction. Therefore, so therefore, our, our hypothesis must have been false. Therefore, if a is odd, then... A plus 1 is even. And that is it for item C. Um, let's do item D. So once more, we're going to assume that the consequent, uh, the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. So D, assume, assume A minus B is odd. And a plus b is even. So um, in this case, we are going to say, okay, then there exists integer c d such that uh, a minus b is going to be equal to 2c plus 1. And a plus b is going to be equal to um, 2d. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these. So a minus b plus a plus b is going to be um, equal to, let's see, it's going to be equal to 2c plus 1 plus 2d, right? And so if this is the case, on the left hand side, we're going to have 2a is equal to, um, that's going to be 2c plus 2d plus 1. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to factor this. So I have that 2a is going to be equal to 2 times c plus d plus 1. So c plus d belongs to the set of integers, so 2 
uh, 2c plus d plus 1 is odd. Um, and so what we have here is that the left-hand side is even and right-hand side is odd, which is a contradiction. Therefore, therefore, um, if a minus b is odd, then a plus b is odd. So that is it. Uh, we have shown that it leads to a contradiction uh, by the left hand side being even and the right hand side being odd. And let's go to the last one. So for item E, once more, we assume that the antecedent is true. So assume A is less than B and A B is less than 3. And and let, so and let A, uh, let A not equal to 1, right? Because um, we're assuming that the consequent is false. So we have that A is A belongs to the set of positive integers. So A is greater than or equal to 2 if it means that um, A is not 1, right? So let's, let's see what we can do here. Um, so if A is less than B, it means that, okay, A is at least Two, right? But A is less than B, so B must be greater than or equal to 3, right? Um, but we have a problem here. So therefore, therefore, the product AB can be, um, can be, I'm going to actually phrase this, therefore, the lowest that product a b can b is uh, the lowest the lower boundary for a is 2 and the lower boundary of b is 3 so is equal to 6 right but a b is less than 3 which is is a contra Okay, so um, once more, we have shown here that uh, if A is not equal to 1 and A belongs to the set of positive integers, it means that A is at least 2. And if A is less than B, it means that B is at least 3. So AB is at least 6, right? Um, actually, let me rewrite this. So... So a b is at least greater than or equal to six, and then but a b is less than three, which is a contradiction. Okay, and now we say therefore, therefore, if a is less than b and a b is less than three, then a is going to be equal to one, um, and that is it for item six.